We're going to wrap up this section on magnetics with a modeling exercise. And it's a fairly simple problem. We're looking for some buried metallic drums. And we suspect that the drums, these are drums of radioactive material. They could be hazardous waste or some other material. But, but they've been buried secretively, clandestinely. Uh, at, at a site, and you know for some reason that, that uh, something's happened at this site. And you also know that if you go in there with a backhoe uh, to try to excavate the area, you're probably going to rupture these drums wherever they are. And, you know, so this could lead to, to groundwater contamination, maybe even atmospheric release, and, you know, and a variety of issues could come up. So you, you know, in your initial reconnaissance of the area, there's some background information here that tells you that the bedrock in the area is also magnetic, it's basalt. So you're going to use a combination of both gravity and magnetic surveys to differentiate between bedrock and uh, alluvial materials and the magnetic materials that uh, are the, the drums that are buried at the site. You don't know how many there are, you don't know where they are. And so again, the, the general background on the site is that you do have this basalt uh, bedrock and it is uh, a ferromagnetic uh, material, so you do have this alluvia which is not magnetic. And so you're, you're really, when you look at that profile, uh, you're really unable to, if you're just looking at magnetics and hoping that that's going to tell you where all the drums are, you really don't know for sure uh, what's due to bedrock and what is due to the uh, buried, buried drums. So, uh, but there is a large density contrast between the basalt bedrock and the alluvia. So a gravity survey is going to tell you what the contribution to the magnetic field will be associated with the bedrock. So you can eliminate the bedrock as a variable and concentrate only on the remaining anomalies that would be you would you would assume that they would be due primarily to the uh, metallic uh, uh, drums that have been buried at the site. So background information on the site you have alluvia with um, 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter density you've got uh, basalt bedrock one point uh, that should be 2.8 grams per cubic centimeter uh, density at the uh, at the site susceptibility of 0 0.006 and a magnetizing field intensity of 55,000 nanoteslas. So if we look at the kind of a general starting point here it's it's um, we've got two layers we've got a layer of alluvia we've got the layer of basalt here We've also defined the main magnetic field, the, the inducing field strength, 55,000 nanoteslas. We have the field inclination, 65 degrees. We have the uh, declination, which we're just leaving a zero here. So we've got this anomaly. This is a magnetic anomaly that we see over here. And this we're just looking in depth uh, on this you know, lower cross-section view. And when you see these anomalies here, you might be scratching your head, well, could there be some drums over in this area that, that would be contributing to, to this rise in the magnetic field? Could there be drums in this area producing this pronounced feature? Most likely this is where the drums are, you would say. Uh, but we don't know about these other features. Are there drums over here producing uh, the response that we see here? So, so what we're going to do now is we're, we're going to dive into uh, GMSYS. We're going to take, um, take a look at, uh, you know, the modeling process. And uh, here we are. So we've got the magnetic field intensity. And we don't really know, you know, we can't just do an inversion in order to match the magnetic field because some of this is due to bedrock, some of it's due to buried drums at the site. We don't know which is which. So what we're going to be uh, what we're going to be doing here is um, 
we're going to have to pull up the gravity. So we're going to take a look at the gravitational field here. We can see that straight away that there is a gravity low in this area, rising up to gravity highs on either side. And we assume that this is due to the bedrock configuration. Now, if you remember, before we have to uh, set up our uh, modeling and version parameters here, I'm just going to let these points go up and down. There are a lot of points here, so the inversion should, uh, sh we should be able to match the gravity anomaly just by moving these points up and down. You could move them left and right. Um, the uh, constraints that we're going to incorporate are we've, we've got to really be careful that we don't let the points, <clears throat> you know, go, go into the building next door, uh, go, go down the road. So we're restricting, um, in the inversion process, we're restricting the, um, the, the program to movements in the values of x and z of two feet. Of course, in our case, we just specified z, so uh, we're only going to let the, the, uh, these points defining the boundary between the alluvia and the basalt go up and down by about two, two feet uh, at, an, at a given inter iteration. So that we've got those constraints, and we also, if you remember, we have to, and you'll have to bear with me here because I've got to, I should have done this beforehand, but you know, if you're working with GN, GM Sys, you, you you're telling the program which points to uh, to invert. And this should look familiar to you because we did this before when we were working with uh, the gravity modeling, and we're back to gravity modeling again, except for a different purpose. Um, before, when we did this in the gravity section, we were looking for groundwater. We were looking for glacial valleys, uh, where the, the deeper valleys, where do we want to place our uh, groundwater wells, so, you know, figuring that the uh, uh, groundwater is going to accumulate, accumulate in the uh, deeper glacial valleys. So we're going to let the program move these points up and down, and we're just, just going to uh, determine what the bedrock configuration is. That's what we're going to do. So we'll start off, um, you can see with our initial ver in inversion, we've got observations here, the points. These are our calculations. And you can see that the bedrock, you can see a bedrock valley is beginning to form here. And then we're just going to continue to iterate. And um, I'm just clicking the uh, iterations button here. And we'll do that a few times. And you can see that there's a, uh, the glacial valley is, is becoming clearly differentiated here. And I'll move these off to the side. And um, I'm going to accept this because it, it looks pretty reasonable. It, it's, uh, it's a good, good inversion. So I'll just go ahead and uh, accept this result. And what you can see is that we have a uh, valley here in the basalt bedrock, and um, and and so we're fairly confident that we have the geometry of the bedrock tied down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the magnetics, and you'll see that we don't um, we don't have any calculated curve in there at present. However, I'm going to come into the bedrock here, and I'm going to change the magnetic susceptibility to, it was given as 0 0.006 um, CGS units, dimensionless CGS units. The density, as I mentioned, I think I had it incorrectly in the figure, but it's 2.8 grams per cubic centimeter. We're going to basically turn on the bedrock now, and when we do, we see that um, we see the contribution to the magnetic field that we measured in this area that's associated with the bedrock. So we now 
we don't have a perfect match. Um, and there, there are things that you could could do. We we could uh, you know play around with this a little bit. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of you know these little x's over here are the reference point. We're really only interested in the relative um, variations in the in the uh, uh, magnetic field. Uh, <clears throat> so you, you could pick various points along the profile and you can see that they... Now we kind of expect anomalies, so we know that this anomaly here is is associated with the buried drums. So we now know where the buried drums are. The buried drums are located in this area here. Uh, the question is how far down. We know that these anomalies, these magnetic anomalies, tend to to drop down into, into negatives. So uh, something like uh, something like this. If <clears throat> we wanted to try and do a little bit better job, we could come back in and move our gravity data points around a little bit. But this looks pretty good to me. We've done, we've accomplished our initial objective, which is to separate the magnetic field that's associated with the bedrock, the basalt bedrock, from the magnetic field that's associated with the drums, the metallic drums that are buried at the site. We assume that the gravitational field associated with these drums is going to be so small that they're, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not really going to influence the uh, result that we have down here. Now another point to make is and when we did this with gravity is that we've made the assumption that these valleys are extensive. Uh, they they e extend in and out of the section um, basically to plus and minus infinity. So so these valleys that we that we see here uh, and the scale over here is 10 kilometers can't quite see it all, uh, but we're going, um, you know, almost 10 kilometers in and out of the section. So these are extensive valleys, and if we had any reason to to feel that these valleys might not be significantly longer than they are, you know, you know, about 10 times as long as they are deep, and it looks like the greatest depth here is about 36 feet. We're dealing with uh, units of feet here then we would also have to incorporate that in our model. But we aren't going to, we aren't going to bother, bother with that right now. We're going to focus in our next step um, trying to determine, to, to deal with some issues associated with determining the extent and the number of drums in this per particular area that's producing the anomaly that you see. So, um, that's what we'll talk about next. Uh, thanks for joining us, and see you next time.